This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I've got Kim McCann with me again. Thank you for joining us. You are the Senior Public Health Inspector with the Leeds, Grenville and Lanark District Health Unit. You came all the way from Brockville. Thank you for, oh, for this to be here today. No problem. We're going to talk about, uh, originally it was extreme cold temperatures and how to deal with that, but almost our conversation before we, we started to air, it's almost all types of extreme temperatures we're going to talk about. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, like you were, we were just chatting on Friday, it was so cold. And now, you know, the next couple of weeks is going to be right around that zero mark. So yeah, the weather is just kind of unpredictable, but you know, that's the weather that can bring on some nasty storms. That's too. right. And we're early February, so you never know what you're going to get. We will probably still get some extreme cold temperatures. Yeah, we, yeah, we're, you know, the, uh, the groundhogs are predicting a, a longer winter this year. So you never know what the next six to eight weeks could bring. That's right. That's yeah. right. And things can change within 24 hours. Yeah. Too, like we're seeing <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So why is it, it, is it uh, important to be prepared? It's important to be prepared just because right now, and especially in the winter months, our weather is unpredictable. So, you know, we could get a really heavy snowstorm like we received in December. We could get an ice storm, you know, and we could get really high winds and all of those things, you know, could put our power out. Um, may stop us from traveling um, like it did at Christmas time. I don't know about you guys, but some of my family got, uh, um, you know, had to change their plans uh, because of that snowstorm. So all of those things can be affected. Even, you know, even if the power is out for a long period of time, there may be, you know, our grocery stores may not receive or be able to receive because their power is out too, you know, food. So that can, you know, that could affect us, our medications, our pharmacies may be closed. So it's just, it's really wise to be prepared. It really is a domino effect. It's not it, just it what's really happening is. in your home. It's what's it's happening in your community. In your community. That's absolutely. right. And that's yeah. when you realize how much you depend on yeah. your community. Yeah, that that's for right. Sure. Yeah. So what is the first thing you suggest people do to prepare? Listen to the weather. <laughs> That's the very first thing is, you know, we have lots of really great weather stations, lots of really great local TV and radio stations that can pr tell us what the weather predictions are going to be. So if you are expecting um, a severe storm, then, you know, you may have to alter your travel plans. If you do have to go, make sure you do have a first aid kit and a, an emergency uh, preparedness kit in your car. Um, make sure that people know your travel plans and even at home make sure you have uh, an emergency kit in your home so if we are without power then you can you know you can self, you're self-sufficient basically okay. um, and we usually recommend that with your emergency kit have about 72 hours worth of supply with you so you want to have things like non-perishable foods of course um, things that you may not need to cook um, extra medications uh, pet food, don't forget about our yes. furry friends, you yes. know, um, because it's important that they have food and water as well, and they may be on medications, and of course have some extra water too, because if the power goes out, we may not necessarily be able to get water from our taps, or there may be a problem where the water is contaminated if, for example, you live in the city. Right, right, right. So what else can people do to prepare for an emergency? Um, I think, you know, the other thing is, is check on your friends and family, mm -hmm. have that, have that network ready. So, you know, I have close neighbors, my, my one set of neighbors, for example, are my in-laws. So we've made arrangements ahead of time that if there's, you know, something going on that we can connect, um, at, have an emergency plan right. in, in your, for your home. So if it's a certain type of an emergency where you may have to evacuate your home, you may not all be able to go out the same door. So have a meeting spot somewhere on your property or, you know, at a neighbor's house, perhaps um, things like those are things to consider. I, I can remember having an elderly neighbor and we had a, a deal mm -hmm. <laughs> when she got up in the morning, she opened up her drapes. Oh. If she didn't open up her drapes by like 10 o'clock and then I had a key to her house to be able to go over and check on her. Oh, that's a so great idea. So that's the sort of thing you got to remember, you know, your neighbors. Yeah. 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 And that's the thing, right? And um, some of our neighbors or some of our friends, some of our family members may be elderly. Yes. And they may not cope so well with an emergency. So it is really important to remember. We call it the buddy system. So check on your buddy to make sure that 
they're coping okay. And, and you know, I, I find too with elderly people, if there's an emergency, I, I think of the ice storm. Yeah. Oh, they were going down with the ship. They, you could not get them to leave their house. Yeah, you could not get right. them to come over to your house where you had heat, you had a wood stove. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, I'm staying here. I got to watch my house. Yeah, that's so right. Keep an eye on yeah, each other. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So any tips on how we can dress if you have to go outside? Yeah. If, if you do have to go outside, it's, it's important to dress for the weather. So, I mean, it's winter, so make sure you have warm clothing on, of course. Um, we don't want to go out in our shorts, for example. Um, so make sure you are dressed properly. Dress in layers. Um, it just helps maintain your inner core uh, body temperature so that, you know, in those really cool days, you can um, stay nice and, and toasty warm. And make sure that you cover any type of exposed skin. So with, with you know, the cold temperatures that we've had recently, um, even with the, with the uh, winds, you may get, in, there may be a chance of frostbite on your, on your exposed skin, so don't forget about your face too. Um, and then of course, um, again, like I said, dress in layers so that if you, know, if you do get, start to get a little bit warm, you can take a layer off. Um, and try to avoid activities where you may start sweating because if you start sweating and you get that wet layer, you, you, know, you can get, get mm -hmm. cold at that point. So. Now, I've never had frostbite before, but from what I understand, it's sort of a, a burning sensation, mm -hmm. and then you can't feel it anymore. Yeah. So you've caused a lot of damage by the time you've stopped. Yeah, that's and, right. And that's right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I. It's. It's one of those things I. I describe as, you know, it's frozen and hot all at the same time. Yes. So it's. It's kind of a funny sensation. Yeah. 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 And I understand that once you've got it too, you're prone to getting yeah. it there again. Yeah. So. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So if people want more information about emergency preparedness, we have go? lots of information on our website. Um, they can go to healthunit.org um, and then click on the emergency preparedness tab and it will bring them to cold and hot um, and just cold and hot temperatures, how to prepare for that and also uh, just general information on how to prepare for an emergency. Okay, many areas have warming shelters too. Yeah. So that's always, you know, to keep an eye on. I, I you know, you wonder about the, the homeless people or people that Yeah, are, yeah, that's yeah. right. A, a lot of municipalities do, so do check the uh, municipal website, whatever town you live in or, or village you live in, to see if they do offer that type of service. Okay, and mm -hmm. just some caution out there too, like people may use uh, heating devices. Some people will use their oven, their stove, yeah. uh, space heaters. Yeah. Be very careful. Be, be very careful. And, you know, so uh, carbon monoxide would be yes. a big concern. Some people will bring barbecues inside, will bring oh, propane my. tanks inside uh, to cook for their families. But yeah, carbon monoxide is a big, big concern. So you do, you know, be very cautious with that. Um, and again, with with like with space heaters and stuff, just make sure that they're, you know, in an area where they're free of any of any kind of debris, right. um, so that we don't start fires too while we're absolutely in that situation. Absolutely. And we could just go. I have a quick story about uh, winter survival kits in the car. My dad was an avid. When you're in the car, he had everything he needed. <laughs> he would dress in his snowmobile suit. He'd have his hat on. Oh. He'd have gloves on and everything like that. And somebody would say, "Gee, I saw your dad today. He looked like he was going skiing or snowmobiling." Yeah. Like, no, he was going to Rita Lumber. Yeah. He was going to the lumber well, store. But he was ready. Guy. Yes, yeah. He yeah. was ready for, uh, yeah. for anything when it came yeah. to being an, an emergency in the yeah. car. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. And like we say, it's it's just we're just into February. We can still get any kind of weather. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff we're talking about can be extreme cold or extreme heat too. We've got yeah. To, you know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, you just don't know. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Well, tis the season, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't always guarantee what the gophers have told no, us. No, so. yeah, yeah, that's the right. The groundhogs, the groundhogs. <laughs> yeah, that's yes. right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much for joining us today, Kim McCann, the Senior Public Health Inspector for Leeds, Grenville, and Lanark District Health Unit. And uh, you, you've got locations all over. You were in Brothel this morning, Smith yeah, Falls. Yeah, and I yeah. was in Perth and yeah, yeah, all over the place. Yeah, well, thank you for what you do. Thank you. Take care.